Lord Jesus, thank you for letting us be in this place today. God, I worship you and I lift you up and I magnify you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your goodness and mercy that's new every day. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for letting us be in this place free. Free from troubles and free from cares. Knowing that you cover us and lead us and minister to us. Thank you, Jesus, for the breath that we breathe and the song that we're able to sing. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood that was poured on Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you, God. I lift you up and I magnify you today. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you, Jesus. Let's worship him today.
church and uh, welcome to our Wednesday night service. A couple announcements we just asked you to continue looking on the pamphlet to see who turn it is to clean the church so we can continue attending services on Sunday. Also, you can continue giving your tithes and offerings to our website if you're unable to attend the services in person. Our website is www.thepgja.org. Prayer requests, we ask you to continue praying for Pappy Joe, Sister Kathy, Sister Debbie, Sister Dorothy, and all the ones that aren't able to attend the services, as well continue praying for the pastors and our nation at this time. And also, we ask you to please pray for revival. And I ask you to please uh, bow your heads with me right now and let us take these needs up. Lord God, Jesus, I give you the glory and the honor, Lord. For you are so great and so mighty, Jesus. You have done miracles, Lord, for us during this time, Jesus. Even though we might feel like this time of 2020 has not been the greatest for us, Lord. But you have continued doing miracles. You continue letting your spirit move throughout this world, Lord Jesus. Continue letting your spirit anoint and bless us, Jesus. And I ask you, Lord, to please send a mighty healing on Pappy Joe, Sister Kathy, Sister Debbie, uh, Sister Dorothy, and all the ones that are unable to attend the services, Lord God. I ask you to please let a mighty healing on their bodies, Lord Jesus. A mighty blessings in their health and in whatever need they might need at this time, Lord God. I ask you to please heal them, Lord God. Lord Jesus, I pray for revival throughout this city of Johnstown and this nation, Lord God. I pray that your spirit moves miraculously throughout this place, Lord God, to the point where we are unable to stop it from happening, Lord Jesus, that we can't hold it back, Lord Jesus. We just got to worship and praise for how great you are, God. Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord Jesus, that your mighty spirit just heals us Bless us, Lord Jesus, draws us closer to you, God. Continue healing and blessing the pastors during this time, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I ask you to continue blessing their minds, their souls, Lord Jesus, as they lead us, Lord God, during this time, Jesus. And I pray for this nation, Lord Jesus, to have each and every individual reach out to you, Lord God. Have them reach out to you for whatever need they have, Lord God. Not let them search somewhere else, Lord God, to try to heal the emptiness that they might be dealing with or the pain or the financial need that they need, Lord God. But they reach out to you, Lord God, because you help the ones that reach out to you. You bless us, Lord God, when we cry out to your name. Lord God, I pray, Jesus, that they'll take this opportunity at this time, Lord God, to get closer to you, Jesus. 
And I pray, Lord God, that you may bless whoever may be watching this service. That you may heal their mind, their soul. Whatever financial need, health need, spiritual need. Maybe it's just the motivation that they might need, Lord God. I pray that you bless them mighty, Lord Jesus. And you let them see how great you are, Lord Jesus. And how you're here for us and all we have to do is cry out to you. Lord, I give you all the praise and all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a special presence of the Lord in this place that's, um, that's here to minister to you, the congregation. I feel it in the spirit. And if you reach out, he will touch you today. The song that we're going to sing is Psalm 23. The first verse says, The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. The fender behind me. I won't fear. From the verse that was spoken this morning to what I believe the Lord told me to teach in Sunday school to this first song that we're singing. Our faith needs to be in Jesus Christ and Him alone. And if our faith is in Him, He can go before us. He can defend us. He can be our shepherd. And He can be that for you today. So before we start singing, let's, let's reach out to the Good Shepherd. And He can take care of your situation. What, what the enemy may have meant for evil, God can turn it around for good. The Lord can touch any situation. The Lord can touch any sickness and any disease. He can touch an unholy, dirty thing and make it clean. He did it with the woman with the issue of blood. He did it with the lepers. He did it with a, a, a dead man, which made him ceremonially unclean. But Jesus Christ, the living God, healed and ministered and made the situation what it needed to be. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. Sing it, church. Defender behind. Jesus, it's 
with you again in the study that we have been looking in in our changing world. Now, the reason I gave it this name is, again, the importance of the, uh, the visionary part of it that Daniel had with the, uh, with the nations of this world and how they're represented uh, in uniqueness through certain uh, great, how can I say, uh, empires that had come upon this earth uh, symbolized in that image that Nebuchadnezzar had seen in a dream that was revealed uh, the meaning uh, being revealed by Daniel uh, through the power of Almighty God, through uh, the revelation of what it meant. Um, it was for us to, again, understand that the world changes. and But in this last period of time the scripture does let us know that the knowledge of man shall increase greatly in this time in the last days and in this knowledge increase uh, we have had a tremendous amount of change in the way that we perceive the world and in the way that uh uh, we see the world. Uh, we have today uh, the media, which is present to us in so many different uh, ways. I mean, uh, we can we can have it through uh, many variations of the internet um, and the technologies that are uh, useful there. Um, I mean, most of us are not aware of how far technology has already come and some of the breakthroughs that have happened uh, in this this world. Uh, uh, mankind is, in general, okay, the general population is not really uh, caught up to it, but um, we are we are seeing uh, these things and uh, as far as the change that happened in our society, we see uh, immorality uh, being uh, increasing and being more prevalent amongst those who call themselves Christian, those who call themselves uh, children of the Lord. Um, immorality has increased tremendously uh, in these places uh, with 
uh, most of them not even recognizing that uh, they are living in uh, many of things that are described uh, through the text of Scripture and uh, even uh, given to us in the Old Testament uh, that, you know, is symbolically represented to the, today. And then we are engaging in, in so many things that were worshipped to, uh, to the gods of the nations that were uh, in this world at the time of the writings of Moses and the time of the writings of the prophets. And we, we see that the law and the prophets come together and give us a, an idea of how perverse the world was. Uh, and how perverse the Gentile world was uh, outside of the understanding and the knowledge of God. And the book of Romans gives us an understanding of the treatment of mankind towards God's laws. In other words, man had misrepresented them, man had uh, made them perverse. Yeah, we'll see that if you read Romans chapters 1 through uh, 2 and then uh, and some more of that in chapter 3. But uh, this, uh, this concept of immorality, uh, in other words, uh, it's outside of God's plan for humankind to... Uh, in other words, his conduct, uh, the way that man thinks. Uh, you know, God created man for something uh, higher than what man lives in today as a whole. Uh, God had created man to be able to understand heavenly, and yet we have, we've made great perversion of the heavenly. The media has, the uh, uh, many of those who... Uh, populate the uh, internet. Uh, man has been able to use things uh, that could be used for good, but has uh, ended up being used for evil. And here today, uh, we see that increasing in our world. Uh, the immorality that we see in uh, even uh, there are those who are saying, well, you can't talk about these things uh, uh, today. And as I had mentioned before, there's, uh, there's a great taboo of, about talking against transgender or uh, homosexuality um, and uh, even bestiality at this time. And and uh, now there is, you know, there is promotion of, uh, you know, things that, you know, laws have been set against for years. And we are seeing uh, the promotion of the concept of the Carmelite, which is used uh, or... Uh, given to us, and Paul writes a little bit about it, and <clears throat> especially to the Corinthians, uh, due to the act of using children uh, and uh, for uh, sexual male children um, by other men uh, for sexual pleasure. And these things were considered normal and even uh, honorable in uh, the richer or those of more prominent means in society. These things were uh, uh, practiced in the days of Paul, and they were practiced uh, 
in the days um, uh, in the uh, uh, days of Jesus and even going back into the Old Testament amongst the Gentile nations. Uh, these things have uh, been the product of sin. They are not the product of enlightenment. They are not the product of, of you know, uh, love. Uh, this is the product of sin. Okay, and, and love has been distorted to uh, be something um, in moral people are living in uh, these sins today and they are emboldened by what the media has to say and they've been emboldened uh, by those who are uh, prominent legislatures in our country and not just in our country but across the world the world has practiced this these sins and it's all over the world it is a terrible mark on humanity that has increased and i'm not just calling out these sins i am just saying once you get to these sins there's enormous amount of sins that have come behind it already and in other words you have a flood of sin as it picks up uh the iniquity and the perversion of it gets worse and worse and becomes more and more acceptable in everyday life. And so looking at this uh, as a whole, uh, many of those who are younger would not understand a time when uh, the things that are taboo today to talk about um, uh, were, you know, hardly even mentioned uh, and were uh, not thought as even something that people would uh, involve themselves in. But as, as uh, you know, my generation has gotten older, we have seen so much change uh, that it just, when you sit down and really think about it, it will... Uh, it will bog your mind and sicken your soul if you're someone who is believes in God and his laws of morality. These, these things have, uh, have been the subject of God's uh, instruction to man since the beginning of time. Is, uh, it is God trying to say, listen, there are certain activities uh, humankind that you were not made for. You were made for something greater, something better, something purer, something that uh, is beyond what humanity thinks he's found in his enlightened state. And we have to be careful that, you know, what we call enlightenment or understanding or better knowledge uh, we have to be very, very careful. And we have to be careful how we treat others in the process of this. You know what? God came uh, in, in a way to humankind that we did not deserve. Uh, through uh, the incarnation and through Christ Jesus, we have this great experience that can be experienced by all men a something that will pull us out of sin instead of deeper into sin pull us more out of the questionable whether it's sin or not and put us on a rock that is solid that is is not something why why walk amongst the the clay of the mire, another one, something that you will sink in and that will cause you to be uh, overcome by it. We can have a place that is higher than us, that we could not go to before, 
but can now through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And through that sending or the infilling of God's Spirit within our lives, that changes everything. But we cannot continue in this immorality that has come into our world and has been Christianized by so many. We have to be careful. And so the writers and the epistles, what we call the letters, in other words, to the churches and to the church as a whole, we, we see here these warnings against this. And today they want to make those warnings like, well, that was for that day, not today. And love conquers all these things and uh, in respects that, you know, you can live in these immoral acts that they call natural, that they call this is the way we're born. Yeah, we are born. We are shaping in iniquity. We're born in iniquity. We're going to have something wrong with us. Okay? Yeah, that's the natural. But the natural state of man right now is not a good state. It is a state that we have to be saved from, that we have to be taken from. And we cannot be taken from that by engaging in the immorality that was condemned and judged in the Old Testament. We can't just, we can't just, uh, you know, walk away from this and, and say, well, that's your opinion. No, that's not an opinion. That is proven over and over and over again in the Scripture. And if we give ourselves over to this type of thinking where we cannot speak against these things, we have fallen into the trap that the enemy of our souls, Satan himself, is wanting us to fall into because then we're not going to speak out against it. Then we're not going to say anything. And we will not be emboldened to speak the word of God freely when we, no matter what it cost us. Yes, it has cost men's lives in the past. It, it has cost them uh, their, uh, it has cost them everything. But I want to tell you something. What is coming upon this world? We're trying to warn them, trying to tell them, not being hateful, not trying to, you know, uh, you know, put a, a knife in their back. No, what we're trying to do is save them from what destruction is coming upon uh, humanity if we do not change our way of thinking. I'm going to John chapter 17 and um, in verses 1 through 6. And I'm going to read it here uh, in the King James Version uh, first here. And verse 1, John, a revelation, excuse me. I say John because he's the writer of it. Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 through 6 in the King James Version. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore, that sit upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have uh, been made drunk with wine of her fornication. So 
he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and i saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet uh, color and decked with gold and per uh, precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations filthiness of her fornication okay verse five and upon her forehead was a name written mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and i saw the great woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of jesus and when i saw her i wondered with great admiration this is like or in other words amazement i'll read this again in the nasb the new american standard bible okay then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke with me saying come here i will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters with whom the kings of the earth commit acts of immorality now here we see the word fornication in the king james and those who dwell on the earth were made drunk in the wine of her immorality and he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness and i saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast uh, full of blasphemy blasphemous names having seven heads and ten horns the woman was clothed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls having her hand uh, uh, having her hand a gold cup full of abominations and of unclean things of her immorality and on her forehead was written a mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth and i saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the witnesses of jesus when i saw her i wondered greatly this was john's reaction to what he had seen in this vision um and uh, what the lord had showed him and uh, one of those angels that had come um i would be standing in amazement too seeing such a vision and such a description that is given here um is uh, how can i say um can be overwhelming because our understanding is not there uh, especially when it comes to these things but we want to look at this uh, again, and I, I'm going to read it, too, also in the NLT, uh, the New Living Translation. And um, one of the seven angels who had poured out the seven bowls came over and spoke to me. Come with me, he said. And I will show you the judgment that is going to come on the great prostitute who rules over many waters. 
the kings of the world have committed adultery with her, and the people who belong to this world have been made drunk by the wine of her immorality. So the angel took me in the spirit into the wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that had seven heads and ten horns and blasphemies against God were written all over it. Woman wore purple and scarlet clothing and beautiful jewelry made of gold and precious gems and pearls. In her uh, hand, she held a gold goblet full of obscenities and impurities of her immorality. A mysterious name was written on her forehead, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and obscenities in the world. I could see that she was drunk with the blood of God's holy people who were witnesses for Jesus. I stared at her in complete amazement. Giving to you these, these three um, uh, different viewpoints, or how can I say, uh, three different uh, ways of communicating this scripture. Uh, one was a little bit more natural to our present day speaking, and that was the last. Um, and it gives us a good understanding of uh, what this woman has taken part in. And I do want to reiterate this again, that it was, she was drunk on the martyrs. Okay. Um, and those who are witness of Jesus. Well, we know that there was many martyrs under the time of the Roman Empire. But then uh, also uh, when we have found in history the uh, Roman Catholic Church had, uh, how can I say, put many people to death who did not believe in this, who were true witnesses of who Jesus really was. Jesus would not have put these people to death, but the Roman Catholic Church did. I'm saying something that's very inflammatory, but the word here is Rome. That I am, uh, that I am actually, how can I say, uh, bringing up because there's a clue that's given here that points us towards that. Now let me say uh, this also: that the word Babylon, the Great, would symbolize the also the the image that Daniel writes about because the head of gold was Babylon. And we uh, see this image as one that is against Christ because we find that rock that comes and that uh, hits the earth is basically Christ. It is the church. It is his kingdom coming uh, to this earth and hitting the feet of it. That means that there is definitely uh, an opposite. There is definitely an MMT. There is definitely something not right about the image. Okay? Because if Christ hits it, 
there has to be something to destroy it, and it has to deal with immorality. And so the terminology given here, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, um, uh, we can see that intertwined in uh, what, you know, Rome had done and what has been given many times within uh, what is called Christianity uh, as a whole. Um, and uh, we try to practice what, you know, Jesus talked about. Um, Jesus said, listen, you know, when Peter took up the sword and, and uh, you know, cut off Malchus's ear, it was not something that Jesus promoted. He did not promote the use of execution, the use of force against those who stand against what Jesus proclaimed and what his church was to stand for. Um, and uh, yet, it was used by so-called Christianity. And it has been used on uh, even during the Reformation, and it has been used by, uh, uh, well, a few of the Reformers, where they put people to death who resisted them or who did not believe in the same things that they were teaching. They just repeated what they broke away from. And... Um, this began the premise of the Reformation. Hmm, that makes me think. We need to think more clearly about the Reformers and what their message was. Listen, this thing was not lost, but there, but there is a woman who is drunk on the blood of the saints. From generation to generation, after the outpouring of God's Spirit upon the church, after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, there has been generation after generation of people who have done it in the name of Christianity. And that false Christianity sits upon a ugly beast. And it is full. And it is drunk on its immorality and the blood of the saints. I say to you that we, we have to be careful how we handle this thing we call the church and what we call the church and what we call Christianity. We have to be careful and we have to be very, very discerning through the word of God what all that is. The next lesson, I am going to get into more of this immorality, this fornication. The fornication means immorality in general. It, it has a lot to do with a lot of different sins. Uh, and uh, this is something that deals with the spiritual and natural. Uh, and uh, we are going to look at that in uh, more in depth. Let's, let's stop here and let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your blessings, your goodness, and your mercy. 
We pray, Lord God, that we stand up today for, Lord God, all the things that your word tells us, that we'd be not afraid in this world that we live in. And Lord God, that we can stand up and say, Lord, help us. Lord, that we would walk, Lord, in the light of your word and in the light of your spirit and not the things of this world or the spirit of that beast. Lord, we give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you.